Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with David Bradley. Today we're coming to you from uh, the beautiful Martha Stacy Conference Center kitchen and we appreciate Bank of the Mountains for allowing us to use their facilities. Today is all about romance and making the perfect romantic dinner. And this is something that is really easy. Uh, you know, my recipes generally are in the easy category because there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, so I hope that you will enjoy these recipes. Uh, today we're going to be uh, starting out with one of my favorite recipes, broccoli casserole. Now broccoli casserole is mainly cheese or some sort of cheese sauce with broccoli and you can either do breadcrumbs or crackers on top. And I have done a lot of broccoli casseroles in my time anywhere from a broccoli baked where like you use mayonnaise, uh, maybe cream of mushroom soup or cream of broccoli soup, uh, cheddar cheese, and, and the list goes on. But this is a very, very, very simple and very cheesy uh, broccoli casserole. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna get uh, my flame started here and uh, we're gonna put on medium about medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and put in about three quarters of a cup of milk. And then I'm gonna add some, just some, some fresh cracked pepper to the milk. That'll give us just a little bit of flavor later on. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up Velveeta cheese. You know, People say that you should stay away from processed cheeses and kind of go with all natural. And I agree with that for the most part. But when you're fixing something like broccoli casserole, it's time to break the rules and go with creamy Velveeta cheese. And what I'm doing here is I'm mainly just going to cut it into blocks. There's really no right or wrong way to this because the cheese is just going to melt anyway. So, just going to get it all cut up. And then we'll be putting this into our milk mixture as it's heating up. And then the heat will melt this cheese. Uh, you'll notice here on the counter that I already have my broccoli fixed. Now, you can buy frozen broccoli uh, and boil it in uh, salted water uh, for about eight minutes or until it's like a crisp tender. Or you can get fresh broccoli and cut it up. And in this recipe, I'd probably use about a pound and a half to two pounds of fresh broccoli. And uh, you can... Uh, uh, Put it in boiling water for about a minute. It doesn't take long for fresh, fresh broccoli at all. All right, so now we got our cheese all cut up into little blocks here. I'm gonna go ahead and just lay it in my milk mixture here. But back to the broccoli, I use the microwavable broccoli. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, the Throw it in the microwave for about five minutes. It's exactly perfect. Just follow the package instructions on it. And plus you don't have to deal with all the boiling water. Getting all that prepared. It's just much easier to throw it in the microwave. And I'm definitely not leaving to chance any of this little bit of cheese that was left on the cutting board. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this uh, uh, start to melt and let it simmer for just a bit until it becomes really smooth and saucy. And then we're gonna add our broccoli. All right, our cheese sauce is just about perfect. 
You can see how smooth it's got. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to add our broccoli into our sauce. We're just going to fold that in. Wow. I don't care who you are. That's just that's just good stuff. <laughs> All right. So now that we've got our broccoli in, we're just going to pour it out into our casserole dish. Spread that out. Try to get it even as we can. And this is a, I had pre-buttered this casserole dish. And now we're going to take your favorite type of buttery cracker, Ritz, Townhouse, whatever you like. And just go over it. I'm using a sleeve. If you need to use more, and on your liking, you go right ahead. Good thing about recipes, we can change them as we want to. And now I've got just some little better pieces. I'm going to dot it with better. Better makes everything just a little bit better. All right. So now we're going to put our casserole into a preheated oven, 350 degrees, and we're going to bake this from around uh, 20 to 25 minutes or until it's golden brown and bubbly and delicious. All right, our broccoli casserole is in the oven, and I'm telling you, this kitchen smells amazing. What we're going to do right now is we're going to prepare our uh, filet mignon, and I've got two really nice fillets right here. When you take them out of the refrigerator, what you need to do is you need to let them set out for at least a half hour until they get more room temperature. That way they'll sear off nicely and they'll get to the right doneness that you want. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little paper towel and just kind of go around the fillet dab off any any moisture all right those look great and now we're going to sprinkle liberally both sides with kosher salt and fresh cracked pepper and don't be afraid to salt these things because the big cut a steak and this is where the flavor is going to come from is your seasoning and then we're going to push our fresh cracked pepper on here and then when you put your pepper on it just kind of press it just ever so slightly into the meat turn that over and we'll repeat that Just press it in ever so slightly. All right. All right. So now I'm going to let these just sit on the counter and let that just kind of sit out, like I said, for about a half hour. So the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to start our orange glazed carrots and what we're going to start with here is a little pot of boiling water and I've got about a 12 to 16 ounce package of baby carrots and they are ready to eat so we're going to just put them in the water we're going to allow that to come back to a boil we're going to let it boil for about eight eight to nine minutes until they're just crisp tender and then uh, we're going to be making a glaze uh, to go with our carrots. All right, we're ready to pull this broccoli casserole out. Oh my. Gosh, that looks so good. All right. That'll continue to be bubbly for a little bit. We're going to just allow it to cool. And uh, when we come back, 
we are going to be starting on our carrots and our glaze and uh, get our meat prepared for the meat, the skillet. We'll sear it, bake it off in the oven, and then we're going to be ready to have a meal. All right, now we're going to start on our orange glazed uh, carrots. I've had my carrots in boiling water, uh, and they are right now just about done. Uh, we'll just, we need about a half a teaspoon of orange zest. So, I'm put this in my zester here. And, this is be so good. enough here I think. I usually have a hand zester but I forgot it today so my bad. <laughs> but we just need just enough anyway to get this started. So we're going to turn on our uh, our heat here. We're going to melt this butter. Got a couple tablespoons of butter and let that get melted and then we're going to add some dark brown sugar. It's going to be sugar, butter, orange zest. How bad can that be? So let this get good and melted. And we're going to go ahead and add our packed brown sugar. We're going to allow it to kind of melt. And then our orange zest. We kind of mix it in. You don't need a whole lot of orange zest. Just a little goes a long way. Get this all good and melted up. The sugar will caramelize here in a moment. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll go ahead and strain out of our carrots. just like a big goopy mess right now but you pour these carrots in here it's going to be really good get it all really good and coated go ahead and pour them in and we're going to just kind of stir this for about two to three minutes and you can see that those carrots are getting all good and glazed. You can smell that orange, that butter. Looks so good. Right. Let me get our bowl here. These out in. Mmm, that looks so good. Right. And that is our orange glazed carrots. And when we come back, we're going to be getting our steak seared and ready for the oven. Now it's time to sear off these steaks. The best part of the whole meal. And this right here is where the romance comes in. Anytime you go out and spend $20 on steaks, 
you know it's romantic. Either that or you're really hungry. Oh, so we've got our skillet extra hot here. We're on medium high heat. And we are going to let these sear for about two to three minutes on each side. We want to, uh, basically we're looking for golden brown in color. It's going to be caramelized. It's going to be, oh, it's so good. I just love listening to that sizzle. To me, when you go out to eat, if you want to eat steak, this is the only steak I usually go to, that or a T-bone. And a T-bone is essentially uh, a filet, but you got a lot of the more fatty uh, uh, tendons and stuff to it too. The uh, olive oil that I used in here, uh, is actually California olive oil. Uh, I highly suggest that you just buy a bunch of olive oil if, you, if you're out, and buy an olive oil that's really suitable to your tasting. I find that olive oil from Italy is actually a little bit bitter, but California olives seem to be a little bit sweeter to me. So that's what I tend to go with is with the California olive oil. So it's been about a couple minutes and we're gonna turn this over. And as you can see, we're getting our crust on there. Right. So now we're gonna do two to three minutes on this side. Now, if you like very rare, and, I, and I'm not a very rare person, but if you like very rare, two to three minutes on each side, let it rest for about 10 minutes, and you'll be ready to eat. If you don't like yours very rare, if you're more of a medium rare to medium or even well done, uh, you'll need to finish it off in the oven. So when we come back, we're going to be putting these into the oven, and uh, I'm going to add a couple little pats of butter when it goes in. It's going to just add to the flavor, and these steaks are going to come out delicious. So when we come back, we'll be ready to hit the oven. All right. Now, I'm going to add a couple little pats of butter, and that's going to melt. And we're going to put it in a preheated oven to 475 degrees. I'm going to finish it off in here. Now, if you like medium rare, uh, keep it in there for about two to three minutes. Uh, for about medium well, four to five minutes, uh, or on up to six for well done, seven to eight minutes. Uh, and that's pretty much the rule of thumb. Or use a meat thermometer if you have one and, uh, and just go by temperature. If you're looking at medium rare, you're looking at about 120 to 129 degrees. Uh, medium will be anywhere from uh, 140 to 150 and well done is gonna be 160 and above. So, I'm going to put our steak on our board here, and we're just going to let it rest. We're going to let it rest for about 10 minutes. Just fold this full up over it. And just kind of we'll let the juices get back into that steak, and when we come back, we're going to have everything plated and ready to eat. We are ready to eat. And I'll tell you, this meal couldn't come fast enough. I garnished our carrots uh, during the break uh, with a little bit of parsley, just to kind of, uh, gotta have a little bit of green on the plate. And it finishes it off very nicely. And now we're gonna 
get a nice helping of our broccoli casserole that's so good and so cheesy. Oh my. People, that looks so good. And I can't wait to dig into this steak. So let's see what we what we've got here. Ah, perfect medium. That looks so good. So very good. Hmm. <laughs> Mmm. Tongue slap your brains out good. This fantastic. That butter, the salt and pepper. Oh, that is fantastic. I'm gonna try our glazed carrots. Mmm. So good and sweet. They're tender yet, just just a hair bit crisp. Mm. That is a superstar dish right there too. And now our ever so cheesy broccoli casserole. right there would be good by itself. So I hope you find romance this Valentine's Day and throughout the year. If you want to try these dishes, our recipes will be available online at uh, Mountain Telephone's website at mrtc.com. Click on MTTV and then click the recipes link. And that has the recipes from all of our shows. You can also check out Mountain Telephone on Facebook and the link to the recipes will also be on there. I want to thank each of you for watching. We've had a wonderful time today. And again, we want to thank Bank of the Mountains for allowing us to use the Martha Stacy Conference Center kitchen. It's a beautiful facility. And if you have any questions about uh, renting the facility, just contact Bank of the Mountains. For all of us here at Mountain Telephone TV, we bid you good day.